السلام عليكم أيها القائد ولكم التحية من جامعة كامبريدج السلام ورحمة الله أنا سامعك I can hear you all تفضل سيد القائد نسعد دائما بكلماتك بسم الله أولا In the name of Allah Good evening to you all I'd like to greet the professors and students of Cambridge University. Thank you very much for inviting me to this occasion and to talk to you. And uh, I had an invitation previously a couple of months ago from Oxford University and uh, gave me the pleasure to talk to them and uh, it all goes well to talk to you all today I like a lot to talk to students of the Cambridge Great University and I'd like to greet the professors and the students and I'm quite sure they are interested in the international affairs and uh, I think this will help all. There are some issues that we need to tackle and uh, I think these issues might affect in so many uh, spheres and it might have some negative aspects as well and I think the world now is a small village and that village should be interested in peace and should be interested in knowledge and everyone should cooperate with the other and there's no need at all to destroy that village that we all have and we all share. We need to know that the solar system is uh, very important and uh, we also have to be determined to serve and save the earth which is part of the solar system and hence I think a human being must feel uh, sorry the human being who is uh, the human creature on earth should feel sorry for what uh, happened in the world and should be very careful not to go into conflicts and not to go into wars because we are the only human uh, beings on this earth and I think this feeling is uh, getting more and more into uh, the human beings and I think you personally when you ask me to talk to you in this occasion on such international issues this gives me an impression that we all the human beings are in need to solve our problems to understand each other and we need not to be isolated from each other because the nature now of the globe the uh, uh, globalization the communication revolution makes the whole world a small village and every part affects the other part you asked me to talk about some uh, important issues that you are interested in such as uh, that hot issue on the 27th of uh, this month in CERT in Libya we will be uh, hosting a meeting to solve the so-called Darfur problem I need to talk about this problem because the Darfur problem now is a, a, a worldwide issue and everyone talks about Darfur but I have a very personal uh, point of view in this connection uh, dear professors and uh, dear sons uh, 
And I think in the future you will be the leaders of the country, you will be ministers, you will be the leaders, you will be the decision makers in your country. So uh, I, I'm quite sure that you are interested and uh, to be aware of this issue. I think that the Darfur problem and the Darfur issue, and I think you as a student at the Cambridge University and the media people and everyone who is attending the CERT International Conference on the 27th of this month, this issue is like so many other issues. It's a, an issue of tribes. You might laugh if I say that the main reason of this issue is a camel. It's a quarrel over a camel. It starts with a quarrel over a camel and it's now an international issue. Issue. Africa has like thousand issues and these issues are about water, are about uh, grass and uh, Africa is divided into 50 uh, countries and the tribes are divided amongst so many countries though they belong to each other. These uh, uh, problems of tribes are endless to be honest and uh, Africa is living these conflicts for ages and centuries. Uh, and I think uh, that these conflicts will come to an end and the African people will leave that uh, primitive uh, area uh, and uh, we will end the problems amongst tribes. The problem that we are uh, having now is we politicize such problems between tribes. The Darfur problem is being politicized. They started the quarrel over a camel and it's now an international issue. Uh, it's an only example. We have so many other examples and uh, a lot of examples are not well internationally known. Why uh, the Darfur problem is now being politicized? Because uh, there are superpowers uh, who are interested in uh, oil and other things and these superpowers are uh, behind the escalation of the situation in Darfur. They are interested in, in oil and uh, these uh, powers who are or who have uh, economic interests in uh, the continent in general, I can say that probably they have some attempts in uh, moving forward the events in Darfur. Probably, you haven't heard this before, uh, that's why it's quite important to hear it from me. My uh, personal point of view is that any African issue, because I know Africa quite well, and uh, I know the tribes of Africa, I know the borders, I know the countries, and I think I'm the only and the sole one in the world who used my car, or, and, and I, I went with my car over 20,000 kilometers in Africa. I've seen so many uh, people in villages, in cities, uh, over the grass, uh, and I've been living with them and I know uh, how they eat, how they live, and I have uh, that uh, uh, information about the African continent because I know Africa and I'm part of Africa. And I started, uh, we heard about uh, Abdel Nasser, Hela Salas, Jumma and uh, uh, I think you, you, you don't know that I was uh, part of these leaders and I was part and I am part of the African continent. The problems started between tribes and uh, eventually they came to an end but now we've started uh, such problems and uh, uh, with the aim of politicizing them. I think uh, 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 no, there's no need to politicize the problems and to put an international aspect on such a problem. Darfur is not a political problem, it's not a social problem, it's not even an economic problem. The problem in Darfur is a problem between tribes, very local problems between farmers and others, and we know 
that such problems might happen in any place of the world and a local mediation uh, might be able to solve the problem because those tribes have their own norms and their own traditions and their own uh, uh, ways of solving the problems. You know, I think you don't know, but let me tell you, Darfur has kings and sultans and uh, they are now uh, uh, part of Africa. Africa has kings and sheikhs and sultans and uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, such titles are available in Africa within uh, the country itself. This is the, the norm of a tribe, which is okay, which is good, and we need to respect it. We need not uh, 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 to politicize things, and if the problem was left to the kings and sultans of Darfur, then they might be able to end it. Now, the superpowers and the international powers uh, are now uh, involved, and we need to know how uh, ready are they to solve the problem. For example, you might find poor people, very poor, in Darfur or any uh, other place. Let's say in Darfur. The problem uh, of Darfur is now uh, worldwide dealt with, and the, the charities, uh, the countries, uh, the societies start sending aids to uh, uh, Darfur, and the poor people in Darfur are quite happy because uh, they thank their God because they have a problem, and due to that problem, they are now receiving aids from these countries, charities, and other. Uh, they need now the problem to go on because they are receiving aids. They are receiving aids, and uh, they uh, might leave their villages, and they might say that we are. Uh, 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 we left our villages because of the disturbances over there. We are refugees now because they are happy to receive these aids, uh, clothes, uh, supplies. And after that, they went back again. They took these things during the day and they went back during the night to the places with all uh, uh, such uh, uh, aids from the charities and countries. Those people really are willing the problem of Darfur uh, to continue because if the problem came to its end now, the AIDS will come to its end. So we open that door. If we don't give them AIDS, if we left, leave the problem to them to solve it, then they will, able, they will be sure able to solve it without any international interference. Now we help them to be willing to aggravate the problem because of these uh, international aids coming to them. We find some uh, local leaders in, in Darfur, for example, a lawyer or, or an officer. He is uh, uh, unknown. And uh, when we uh, gave him a chance to talk in the name of such a tribe, or of uh, a movement or a faction and uh, he goes to the media and he is now well listened and well known worldwide being uh, uh, a rebel or whatever he is i could say he is really psychic because he was unknown he is whatever and uh, now he is uh, very well known he is everywhere of the media he is here and there and everywhere and uh, we give him a floor to defend uh, those people and uh, to ask for uh, 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 freedom. And uh, these, these things and these phrases are quite pre prepared. And uh, we don't think it's a real fact. We don't think it's a real fact. And uh, the problem of, uh, of poverty is everywhere. It's not only in Darfur. It's in the whole third world because of the colonialization and colonialism. That's why we have uh, such uh, uh, poor people everywhere. And uh, 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 the uneducated people are everywhere. But now we gave the chance to someone to be a leader and to enter into talks and to start negotiations. This will never come to an end because if the problem uh, 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 came to an end, now it's the time for him to stop talking. So 
he, he will really be willing uh, to aggravate the problem because he talked to the Congress, he talked to the news agencies, he talks to the media. This person again will never, will never uh, be willing to end the problem of Darfur because he is always enjoying such uh, a glory which is not uh, a real one. That's why I think such a problem really should be neglected and shouldn't be politicized and shouldn't be dealt on the international level because the tribes, the tribes are uh, uh, dealing with each other. The tribes have their leaders and those leaders are able to solve the problems, the, inter, the inner problems. It's not the first time to uh, see such a quarrel between the tribes. These quarrels are dealt with and these quarrels are not politicized. That's why I would like to say the Darfur problem is not, uh, has nothing to do with racism because the, has nothing to do with Arabs or Africans because the Sudanese uh, are Arabs and are Africans and we know the main tribes in, in, the, in, in the region. We know uh, Al Masalia tribe, Al Zigar tribe, and Al Zghawa tribe, Al Fur tribe. These are the main tribes in the region. You can't say who is an Arab and who is not. It's not the way. They are melt together. They are Muslims and uh, they follow the same sect, which is the Sunni uh, sect. They all speak Arabic. They have the same local dialect and uh, they understand each other. So, there's no uh, such a gap between them. We don't have that blue side and the, uh, the, the, the other one. We don't have that Arab side or the other one. No. They are melt together. They are combined together. It's very difficult to differentiate between an Arab and an Arab. al Masari tribe, for example, they said, we are from Libya. We are from Salata in Libya. And they migrated to, migrated to, to Darfur. So, uh, uh, they are Arabs. Uh, Zghawa tribe... Uh, have uh, thousands of them in Libya, in Chad, in Sudan as well. They are all combined, they are all integrated. Al Masalit, uh, Al Rizigat uh, tribes are in uh, 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 southern Darfur, in northern Darfur. You, can, you cannot classify them into uh, uh, Arabs or non Arabs. I'm telling you the mere truth. This is the mere truth. We have a sort of a conflict between the uh, famous players or the international scene like uh, the U.S., uh, like China. Everyone uh, wants his share in the region, especially if there is oil over there, which is a dangerous thing. And uh, after that, uh, there are also... Uh, uh, countries who uh, need to put its feet on the soil of, of that region, uh, such countries who need uh, to bring the forces over there under the pretext of solving the problem. The superpowers are really behaving in, in a bad way. The superpowers have their imperial uh, uh, interests, uh, it's not very ethical. And these are the attitudes of, uh, of every emperor, the uh, Roman, the Muslims, the Mongolian. Uh, every uh, uh, one has its own interests. So this is what I want to say regarding Darfur. Regarding the other issues you want uh, to deal with, other than Darfur, you need to know something about the Middle East problem. Yes, the Middle East problem, the Palestinian problem. Uh, dear sons, I would like to tell you that I've studied history and I know the history of this region, I know the history of these countries in the Middle East. The Palestinians and the Israelis are cousins. They are cousins and 
The Hebrew and the Arabic are really similar, and uh, they have sorts of similarities. Let's now talk about the so-called Palestine, or what is called now Israel. These, this area is the mutual house. The Israelis, the Palestinians, can live mutually in this area because none of them, none of them has the right to claim that uh, uh, Palestine or the land between the uh, river and the Mediterranean is his. None of them has the right to declare a state and to deprive the other side. And uh, uh, that's why the Arabs don't want to admit the existence of Israel because the Israelis have claimed their uh, state and uh, this area is amongst them, so none of them has the right to declare that this is his land and to give his name to such land. This is uh, not right. That's why the Arabs don't want to uh, 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 acknowledge Israel, like what happened in Cyprus. It's not uh, acknowledged by anyone except Turkey, because the two uh, parts, the Turkish separates and the Greek separates, they are uh, 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 the people of Cyprus. It's the mutual house. None of them has the right to declare his own state and uh, uh, to give uh, such a land uh, uh, a certain name. That's why uh, the acknowledgement was not really given to uh, uh, this except by Turkey. And the same is in Palestine. Everyone now acknowledges Israel, which is not fair. We need to know that uh, a sole and only uh, party has nothing to do with such a land. There is also, since the year 1948, a mistake committed the mistake at that time was committed when the establishment of the State of Israel. Anyhow, regardless what happened in the past, now, now let's deal with the problem. We have a serious problem, and I think the ways the problem are being dealt with will never solve. Everyone makes use of the problems of the Palestinians or the problems of the Jews in the past for his own sake. A president who uh, wants to win the election or a party who needs to uh, win the elections, just uh, political interests, the superpower when we have a so-called Soviet Union and the U.S. and uh, the Warsaw Pact and the NATO, everyone uh, exploits the Middle East problem and each part makes use or made use of this problem for his own sake. The victims, to be honest, are the Palestinians and the Israelis as well because the deaths are here and there from both sides. None of the uh, uh, Russians, none of the French, none of the Americans uh, 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 lost his life. The people who are lost are Palestinians or Israelis, and I think geographically we need to know, or we know that it's a very narrow area. From Kalkalia it goes to 15 kilometers. It couldn't, it couldn't be an area for two states, and the depth of the population over there is only for 15 kilometers. We can't find a state with a 50 kilometers depth. That's why when we have a Palestinian state in the uh, West Bank, then it will, uh, 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 it will be under the domination of Israel. Even with a plane or with a motor, it will, be, it will be within the hands of Israel. If there is a war, then 15 kilometers will never be a, a sort of a protection. The West Bank is quite isolated from the Gaza Strip. There's a long distance between Gaza Strip and the West Bank. The West Bank or the General Bank 
And so, in this case, how can we establish a state? Part of it on the Mediterranean and part of it is on the uh, Jordan River, the West Bank. And within the so-called Israel, there are million Palestinians who are working, and tomorrow there will be one million and a half, after that will be two millions, three millions, and the numbers are increasing of the Palestinians inside Israel. So, up to the moment, it's not a, a, a Jewish state. It's not a 100% Jewish state. It's a state with uh, one million Palestinians uh, within its borders, and this number is growing of Palestinians. And you know that the numbers of the Palestinians is, is rapidly uh, uh, growing compared to uh, uh, the numbers of the Israelis. This uh, state, which is Israel, has within its borders one million Palestinians, and they are living together in harmony. So this is an example of the one state. The solution is to establish a one state that is called Israel, or whatever you call it, but a one state for both Palestinians and Israelis is the resolution. We have Palestinians who already have the Israeli nationality, the Israeli passports, and those are amongst uh, uh, the problem uh, makers. These narrow land will be never a proper place for two states. The real solution is a democratic one state, and the international opinion should uh, practice pressure and should abide itself to uh, uh, such a solution, and uh, we need to get rid of all aspects of racism, uh, depending on color or race or religion or whatever. These uh, things are not to hinder the lasting peace between the Palestinians and Israelis in this uh, 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 land. And uh, I, I, I think you know that the Jews are quite in, in harmony, they are existing with the Arabs for a long, long time. And uh, when the Arabs are uh, uh, expelled from uh, Spain on the 15th century, the Arabs and the Jews were both expelled, uh, and the Arab states uh, are uh, the states who receive the Jews and protect the Jews and the Romans when they destroy Jerusalem. During the, uh, when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in the year probably 72, uh, the Jews were expelled and uh, they went to the Arab Peninsula and uh, uh, they have the villages and they have a whole valley which is close to Al Medina, which uh, is uh, a city in the so called Saudi. Arabia, so the Arabs are protected the Jews uh, from the Romans, and uh, uh, the, the, the coexistence is there, and they are cousins. Uh, Abraham, the Prophet Abraham, has uh, a son called Ismail and a son called Itzhak, and uh, uh, yeah, the, the Yaqub is, is now uh, the father of the Israelis, and I want to say that they are cousins in all cases, they are quite close to each other. Uh, these uh, uh, powers, the superpowers, or the powers who have interest, uh, interests in the region, they help that uh, sort of conflict, and uh, I'd like to tell you that I have put the, the white book, and uh, there's an English version of it, the name is Isratin, half from Israel and half from uh, Palestine. And uh, I think you have such a book. I think you have it amongst you. We call through the book for the establishment of a one democratic state to be supervised by the UN within the uh, preliminary elections. Then they will go into existence together. We don't care in this case whether the president is a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian. Uh, the one who is elected by the people in this case is the president. 
and uh, we have now an Arab uh, party in Israel. We have Arab deputies in the Israeli Knesset. So we have we have s that model. The West Bank, I won't tell you, it's a mixture between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Gaza. Uh, so they are now uh, uh, living uh, in consistency. They can do it. The Israeli factors, for example, has a lot of Palestinians from West Bank and Gaza Strip working over there. The Israeli factors depend mainly on the Palestinian manpower from both West Bank and Gaza Strip. Commodities and services are also depending. The culture as well is, uh, is a, a mutual thing between the two sides, the Palestinians and the Israelis, and I think they are quite close to each other. And I call for the establishment of, a one, of one state to put an end to this conflict. But we need the refugees, the Palestinian refugees, to go back home. Those Palestinian refugees should go back home because it's their land, it's the farms, it's the homes. They need to go back peacefully, the Palestinian refugees. Then, such state should be, should have nothing to do with the mass destruction weapons. This state should has nothing should have nothing to do with the mass destruction state. No mass destruction state in this state, even if it is governed by Yasser Arafat or Abu Mazen or whoever. I invite you to read uh, my white book, which uh, calls for the establishment of that state. It's Isratin. Oh, Isratin, whatever half from Israel and half from Palestine. I, I'm sure you have that book now. Then let's move according uh, to you about the reform of the United Nations as uh, uh, this uh, issue raises some uh, points amongst which is the reform of the United Nations. We spent years talking about the Security Council and the increase of the uh, uh, members of the Security Council and the permanent seats of the Security Council and non-permanent as well. And uh, what we have to discuss is the United Nations reform. The United Nations is not the General Assembly, is not the Security Council, is not these other councils, it belongs to the UN, the UNESCO, the UNICEF, the other organizations. The UN is these all organizations that belong to this international organization. But what, hap what is happening now, the situation now is not legal, is not democratic, and the world has to change the situation which is uh, rather dictatorship that never helps peace. It threatens peace rather than helping uh, the establishment of peace. Uh, the Security Council is the security of terrorism. The Security Council took a lot from the uh, capacities of the United Nations and is only the Security Council which is dominated by the five permanent members uh, uh, of that council who enjoyed the veto. And that's why we, the small people or the weak people, we do not trust the United Nations. We do not trust the Security Council, the intellectuals, the philosophers, and those people who are like you, I think they have that uh, point of view as well. We, we don't trust the Security Council, and we are not quite uh, satisfied with the performance of the Security Council. We have. Uh, the problem in Iraq, the problem in Afghanistan, the occupation of Iraq, the occupation of Afghanistan, the problem in Yugoslavia, the destruction in these areas, all these things, all these things happen with the existence of the United Nations, with the existence of the uh, Security Council. Why don't we apply the uh, uh, Chapter 7 of the, uh, uh, of the Charter? on uh, U.S. or other countries because 
the U.S. and other superpowers enjoy the veto and the United Nations and the Security Council can do nothing with, uh, sit with these uh, superpowers. And that's why we call for the reform of the United Nations through implementing democracy in this world uh, 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 international organization. And we think the International Assembly is the world parliament and uh, the parliament has the power to legislate and the power uh, uh, to uh, uh, make laws and the power to make uh, the Security Council is, is playing the part of a government of the General Assembly and the, the, the government has to apply the laws adopted by uh, the Parliament. Can we say that the British government is able to uh, uh, make the laws and to ask the British Parliament to implement such laws? No. The British Parliament is to make the laws and ask the government to implement and apply such laws. What's happened in the United Nations is the government, which is the Security Council, is uh, issuing the laws and issuing the decrees and asking General Assembly to apply. Now, uh, uh, the situation is uh, really not in the proper place. And the Security Council decides the General Assembly implement. The General Assembly of the all nations, the General Assembly of the all countries who form such an organization has to play its role and, have, and has to have the capacity to implement democracy. The General Assembly couldn't uh, accept the uh, uh, aggression against a country. But in this case, five members of the Scottish Council or even one member could impose its decision on the international community. It's not, it's not legitimate at all. We need to put an end to this matter. The reform is to reform the Security Council and the Chapter 7 of the, of the Charter should be applied by the General Assembly. The resolutions should be issued by the General Assembly. The Security Council, in this case, has to apply this if they want really to reform the international organization. Otherwise, the situation is uh, uh, really deteriorating and uh, we need to form another General Assembly for, for the poor and for the weak countries. And uh, now, the uh, mechanisms made by the international community is, uh, uh, is really not working. We can say that we have now a new charter, a new charter according to the event uh, and according to the aggression, according to the torture. The charter of the UN says no threat with force and none uh, uh, permittance to use such a force. Now the threat is there and the application of force is there under so many pretexts or under any pretext. That's why I say the UN Charter came to its end. What's happened again is Libya or again at Panama or Yugoslavia or Iraq or Afghanistan or in the country. Such things form really a new charter, a new charter, a verbal charter. And uh, it's happened already, and we need, uh, we need to follow the law of the force. The force is the international law, but we, what we are practicing now is the, the law of force, uh, which is imposed on everyone. We can't believe that uh, uh, the superpowers who are really uh, doing such acts and really doing such aggression and really doing such occupation, when they talk about democracy, when they talk about human rights, we can't believe them. And in this regard as well, uh, when we talk about democracy, when we talk about the Security Council, the General Assembly of the United Nations, I have also the Green Book, and I think you should have that book as well. We have the Arab version and the English version, the Arabic and English version of the Green Book. 
When you read that book, uh, it's not it's not uh, coming out of my mind. It's coming out of my experiences and uh, and my study and uh, my study of the history. And I know a lot about the reasons behind wars, the reasons behind peace, democracy. When we talk about democracy, democracy is a part of two. Uh, words. Demo means people and chairs means uh, the people on the chairs. The people is to govern. This is democracy and uh, it's uh, an probably an Arab word, uh, democracy, democracy or democracy. The people is to chair and the people is to govern. This is democracy. This is democracy. If we need to apply a real democracy, we need to give the people the chance to govern and to uh, sit on the chair and to issue the laws and to create the system that he really needs. The people is the master of the ceremony. We uh, cannot deprive the people from his supremacy and to give such a supremacy to uh, 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 the deputies or to uh, certain persons. This theory, uh, matter of fact, is uh, very important. And, uh, uh, and I can say that the deputies cannot really play a role of the people. Who can represent? Uh, who can dream instead of you? Who can be, what's that? Who can, <coughs> who can achieve this? Yes, Naam Sayyid al Qayyad, tafadl. Who can, who can uh, dream instead of you, of, uh, who can dream instead of the people of better things and better life? Who can, who can uh, hope instead of you? Who can, uh, achieve your hopes and achieves your needs except you uh, no one can deputize you you do such things by yourself on your own the social life the economic life the political life is uh, is is really part of your life you have to do it yourself no one can uh, can represent you we can't say that we have in this village 20,000 people and we can choose one and we tell him you are deputizing those thousands or those millions. We can't have people of millions and only tens of deputies. So the people should do things on his own and uh, no one can deputize him. Let's say now, who can, who can, who can express the opinions of 100,000 people, for example? He can only express his views. And uh, in Britain, for example, uh, the deputies support uh, a type of policy and uh, the people goes into demonstrations against uh, 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 things that are already approved by the deputies. If the deputies of the parliament are really representing the people, so why the people goes, go to the streets? Why the people organize such uh, demonstrations? Like what happened in Iraq, uh, the Congress in, 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 in America, the Congress, the people want the American forces to withdraw from Iraq, and the American administration is uh, insisting on keeping these forces in Iraq. That's why the people is in one side and the deputies are on the other side. That's what I have said in the Green Book. No one can deputize the people. No one can represent the people. The people represent its own. This is democracy. The, the popular uh, uh, committees, the people is divided into committees, into popular conferences, into popular committees. And these committees 
will decide. The Libyan uh, uh, people now is divided into 30,000 committee. Each one consists of 100 male and female persons. Those who are really uh, able to uh, 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 say their wishes and to have the say and to practice uh, uh, power and to uh, uh, be responsible. These uh, three million people who are uh, uh, divided into these small committees, these three millions are the ones who put the policy of the society the uh, home policy, the foreign policy, then they have other meetings uh, to determine a lot of things. That's why the practice of democracy is through the popular committees. No democracy without popular conferences and popular committees. These popular committees are everywhere. These are everywhere and these are the real slogans that we raise. Anyhow, these are the issues that you raised and uh, you need me to talk about. I uh, hope uh, that I uh, covered uh, the issues you asked for and I will be glad to uh, accept your invitations from time to time whenever I find uh, an opportunity and uh, we need to talk very freely about uh, uh, the topic you chose uh, to uh, deal with. Now, if you have uh, any questions, I will be glad to answer before uh, we come to the end of this meeting. Now I'm happy to receive questions. Thank you very much, Brother Leader. Shukran al Qaid. The first question, in fact, comes from Michael Knowles of Pembroke College, من Michael, who is on uh, the Libyan-U.S. diplomatic relations. and listen to your presentation there. Thanks. Yeah, please go. Yeah. Yeah. If you could could you yes, please. Uh, thank you for your uh, reflection on Libyan, Libya's international relations. I had the pleasure and the honor of leading a group of 25 graduate students from Cambridge University to the Cambridge 30th anniversary celebration of the great socialist people's Libyan Arab Jamaa in Seba uh, in February and March of this year. من مارس من it, the invitation of the Green Book Center, Dr. Abdullah and Mr. Khalid, who is with us this evening. We uh, enjoyed our time there and found the debate very stimulating about Libya's recent turn in foreign relations. My, my research focuses on Libya's relations with the United States and specifically during the 1990s and early part of this decade. The comments that have been made on the Libyan side and on the American side were initially very optimistic about the improvement in relations. More recently, 
وفي الأونة الأخيرة يبدو أنه كان هناك رغبة في الاستمرار في هذا بين الدولتين وأود أن أقرأ اقتباسين that demonstrate the discord that seems to continue between the two countries. بين بين the first quote is from Vice President Dick Cheney, Dick Cheney of the United States, States America, who said, we took down the Iraqi government. أسقطنا الحكومة العراقية. صدام حسين is no longer in power. لم يعد هناك ما يسمى صدام حسين. صدام حسين أصبح الآن في السجن وخارج السلطة. His government is gone. حكومة صدام حسين ذهبت ولن تعود. Mr. Gaddafi in Libya watched all of this. الرئيس القذافي في ليبيا يرقب كل هذا. Saw our operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. وعلى ذلك الوضع أيضا في العراق وفي أفغانستان يرقبه. And five days after we captured Saddam Hussein. وبعد خمسة أيام. من اعتقال صدام حسين he went public and announced that he was going to give up all of his weapons of mass destruction. Your son, Saif al-Islam Qadhafi, has responded that, and I quote, Libya's critics make a mistake in suggesting that its overture to the United States is the product of political weakness. On the contrary, Libya feeling secure about its achievements holds out its hand from political strength. Could you please comment on the motivations that brought about the original diplomatic الدوافع التي أدت إلى هذا الأمر والتحصل على العلاقات الأمريكية الليبية وأين تقف هذه العلاقات في المرحلة الحالية وما هو مستقبل العلاقات الأمريكية الليبية؟ دكتور، and I appreciate your participation. Of course, uh, everyone is trying to make use of uh, an event for his uh, sake and for his interest. But such a use or such a thing couldn't be declared before the happen uh, took place. Cheney, why Cheney didn't say this? before Libya uh, uh, took that historic decision. Why Cheney didn't say that uh, we will do such and such uh, for Libya uh, within five months if they uh, uh, step down from uh, trying to acquire such a, a weapon of mass destruction? Because this is not true. He said that after we took the decision, he, he made use of our decision according to his wishes and interpretations. And I'd like to tell you, my sons, that the American president has acknowledged this. And he said that talks with Libya before our decision go, went for nine months. Nine months of uh, uh, negotiations uh, without even... Uh, announcing uh, this between Libya and the superpowers with uh, uh, an international mediation regarding the uh, uh, nuclear program. At that time, Saddam was on and Saddam was not toppled. And even the aggression, the occupation of Iraq uh, uh, hasn't happened. We, we don't uh, feel scary from America and uh, why then, if we, if we fear America, why we have uh, more than 30 years of uh, 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 developing such a program when America were within the uh, crazy period of, of Reagan who uh, suffered Alzheimer and uh, we've told them that uh, uh, Reagan is suffering from Alzheimer and then uh, they acknowledge this fact. Uh, and uh, we think uh, uh, the behavior of, of Reagan was due to Alzheimer he has suffered. <laughs> why, why don't we fear Reagan while he was really uh, uh, pressuring and uh, uh, moving on his fleets? Uh, we need to say we are quite convinced. We are quite convinced 
because acquiring mass destruction weapons is a sort of a wave or a fashion worldwide. Any country was or is willing to acquire the uh, weapons of mass destruction and atomic weapons without even studying the situation. We have discovered that uh, 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 our uh, equipment uh, are now uh, known to everyone and uh, the program is now uh, uh, quite known uh, to the American uh, CIA and the CIA uh, has uh, 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 recordings of talks with the uh, nuclear scientists uh, and the Libyan scientists and these negotiations and these talks are now are not secret. They, they were well known and uh, we need to talk uh, in a peaceful way with America and with Britain via my friend uh, the former British Prime Minister Tony Blair who sent me so many envoyee, envoys and uh, uh, they talked to me about uh, our uh, uh, nuclear program and uh, uh, the equipment are now uh, about to be escalated and uh, we, we thought it's not an, a wise idea uh, uh, to continue. Then the costs of such a nuclear program are very high. And uh, we ask ourselves, why should we have an atomic, an, an atomic bomb? Why should we acquire an atomic bomb? Are we going to hit Israel with the, such atomic bomb? No, because as I told you, in Israel there are one million Palestinians. So it's not logic to drop our uh, atomic bomb on Israel and to kill the Palestinians. And in this case, uh, Gaza Strip will never be... Uh, away from the effect of such an atomic bomb. Uh, the West Bank, uh, Jordan, uh, uh, Egypt will never be uh, uh, safe if we drop such an atomic bomb on Israel. That's why it's not wise uh, uh, to go on with this idea. Now, is Libya going to hit Europe or to drop a bomb on Europe? Or is not, uh, Europe now is not uh, the old uh, uh, Europe of colonialism. Now we have uh, good cooperation between us and the uh, European Union. And we uh, have now talks about uh, 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 trade, about investments, about protecting the environment, the climate change, the Mediterranean basin, and uh, uh, the participation uh, on everything, uh, economic uh, uh, institutions and, uh, and, and so many other prospects. Uh, Europe now is a friend. Europe now is that of Mussolini and the others and the likes. So it's quite impossible, uh, it's not wise at all to think that Libya is going to uh, hit uh, Europe. Who is Europe? Europe is a group of countries that are now friends to Libya. So there's no need to have that atomic bomb. Are we going to have the atomic bomb to hit America? Are we going to have the nuclear uh, uh, weapons uh, to hit America? We, we, do you think that uh, we need to protect America from, uh, from Libya? This is quite impossible uh, to be uh, 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 achieved or to be done. Do you think a wise man can hit America with one Libyan bomb or ten Libyan bomb and then America will reply with uh, uh, a, a double number of bombs? No, this is not logic. This is not logic at all. It's not logic to attack uh, Russia or America or China, who has uh, 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 lots, hundreds and thousands of these uh, 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 bombs. Are we going to use uh, these bombs against Africa? No. We are part of Africa. We are building Africa. And uh, that's why at the end of the day, we say it's not wise after the evaluation of the international situation. It's not wise uh, uh, to go on. And uh, we decided that such uh, uh, a nuclear program is, is a traditional way of thinking. Uh, we follow the, the wave uh, uh, in, in, in the world uh, of acquiring uh, uh, such bombs and such uh, weapons. Now the wave came to its end. Now, uh, Pakistan has an atomic bomb. Why against India? India has an atomic bomb. Why against Pakistan? 
So this part has atomic, and uh, the other part has not. This is not uh, uh, logic. So if Pakistan has, then India should have because of the balance between them. The mass destruction program, the nuclear program, whether uh, is really dangerous, and uh, we we hope that the whole world get rid of such uh, mass destruction weapons. We don't fear anyone. We only fear Allah Almighty. And uh, Dick Cheney, Dick Cheney, when he said uh, this, was not quite uh, accurate. He 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 behaves like uh, like Reagan. I hope Dick Cheney is not sick and is not suffering like like uh, like Reagan. And uh, we hope he will be fine. And uh, I think uh, Cheney's statements. Uh, uh, I think the statements doesn't uh, aff doesn't reflect a sick man. Suppose that we believe Dick Cheney. It's wise for a country like Libya, with five million people, uh, be able to confront uh, the U.S. with all its weapons and uh, and fleets. And uh, if Libya, with the five million people, is willing uh, to avoid confrontation with uh, 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 such an imperial uh, country like the U.S., I think it's wise. So. This is wise, and this is braveness. That's why I have decided to stop it. And uh, I think, uh, with my all freedom, I have decided to take this decision. To take this decision. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother leader. Now, Shukran al do we have a very short question from the floor, please, so that I can, if you announce it to me, I will repeat it for the interpreter. Yes, please, sir. Colonel Gaddafi, you were instrumental in the formation of the African Union and the form of the Republic of the United States. Thank you. Brother Leader, you have publicly called for the African Union to develop into the United States of Africa. Do you think this is possible within the next decade or two? Or even possible at all? <laughs> yes, it could be. It could be. The Africans are now following the steps of Europe, which is consisting of nations who had a lot of wars, destructive wars, and uh, loads of kill people and uh, 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 a lot of wars between the African, uh, the European countries have uh, took place and the Europeans now feel that it's better for them to be unified and we are the Africans are following the steps of the Europeans in this connection. In addition to that, I'd like to say that the Africans are not uh, quarreling oh, uh, nations, we are all black uh, uh, nation, we are uh, uh, consisting of tribes and we are really united in a way. We are living in harmony, we have the same color, uh, we are black uh, and we have the same color. So it's for the interest of all the continent to be united and to face the challenges of globalization. And I think every single nation cannot stand on its own uh, uh, unless they are all united. If it is possible for a single nation, so in this case, Britain might live on its own, uh, uh, France might live on its own. So those good countries, those big countries are now united within the European Union. So it's better for the Africans to have their uh, uh, unity, whether it's an African Union or uh, uh, the United uh, 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 African States or whatever. Thank you very much. Thank you. The third question, now, sorry, just to say that uh, Brother Leader has been very generous with his, with his time. Now, if you will all 
members of the House, please uh, bear with us. Give us your patience. We do have, hopefully, more questions to come. The third question will be from BBC Africa. Have your say. Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Alex, Alex Gatano. And we've heard about the African Union. You're now pushing for the United States of Africa. Initially, you are a keen advocate for Arab unity. And then suddenly, suddenly, at the start of this new millennium, you are a passionate and vocal advocate for African unity. Why? Mr. Interpreter, did you catch all of that? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Sayyid al-Rais, <laughs> kayt? Naam. Would you like me to restate it? The question is not quite, quite completed. It's an idea anyhow. Yes, sir. Thank you. Would the brother leader like the to... Arab, the Arab unity... We need to know that the human history uh, witnessed so many stages, uh, the, the uh, material stage, the demographic stage, and uh, when it comes to the religion stage, we have religious groups, uh, regardless uh, the uh, nationalities. We have the emperor, the Islamic, or the Roman, or the etc. Uh, when it comes to uh, the other step with the, the unity of uh, Italy or Germany or Turkey or Iran or China, so now we have those uh, uh, national uh, steps. Uh, the Arab as a religion or as uh, uh, are not really quite uh, uh, able to go to follow such a step. Now, the world is quite materialistic and those people who have similar interests have to uh, go and find what is for the sake of themselves. We can't say now we, we are able uh, uh, to have a unity between Libya and, uh, and Marrakesh. We cannot have a unity outside the, the demographic uh, uh, area. There is no any possibility to have a unity between the European Union and uh, New Zealand or Australia. Uh, it's not impossible to have such unity because geographically it couldn't uh, be the way. Yes. And every region has uh, its own ways of being united. We have now the ASEAN, we have the uh, Commonwealth, and uh, we have the African uh, Union, uh, we have the US, we have Latin America. The world now is being divided into about seven or ten groupings, main groupings uh, that contains uh, uh, countries uh, and uh, the currencies also will be united in a way. The world banks will be also uh, 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 gathered in a way and this is the new world form. I think uh, we can't talk about the Arab unity now because we, we don't know where the Arab should be put in unless they accept my invitation and uh, they need to join the African uh, Union and we have to establish the so-called African Arab Union. Two-thirds of the Arabs now are Africans and the other third is in Asia. Uh, Asia. This is uh, the situation. Uh, to have the unity, we need to join Africa because we can't talk now about uh, uh, such a religious unity or such unity unless we join a, 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 a gathering. The, the currency that works now is demography, is the materialistic interest, and thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Leader. I, I have one more question here that has been submitted. You have bravely stood up, and I quote, you have bravely stood up against the global dictatorship. The whole free world of non-aligned people have benefited. Can you support taking the US to the International Crimes Tribunal for war crimes against Iraq? End quote. Uh, 
The whole world knows what is happening in Iraq, and the whole world is now uh, making his his own views regarding the situation over there. When there is a mistake, the mistake should be uh, corrected. The invasion of Iraq is a mistake, a mistake that is acknowledged by the U.S. and by Britain. The both, uh, they both say that we have information about uh, mass destruction weapons acquired by Iraq. The Iraq has been inspected, the Iraq has been hit, the Iraq has been divided, and uh, they never find mass destruction weapons in Iraq. They regret what's happened. They acknowledge the mistakes committed by them in Iraq. But this is not logic. You, you slaughter a people. You destroy a country uh, for the sake of some information. Now, uh, the superpower who has permanent members of the Security Council are behaving in such a dangerous way. They destroy that people according and depending on rumors or uh, depending on... Uh, uh, in uh, uh, proper information. This is not uh, really fair, this is not really logic. And uh, it's, uh, it's a mistake acknowledged by those uh, uh, people who have done it. They need to regret, they need to withdraw from Iraq, they need to leave Iraq for the Iraqis, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Leader. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, so thank you very much to the members of the House for your patience and for your contributions, and thank you above all, Brother Leader Muammar al-Gaddafi. Thank you very much for you all. Thank you very much for you all. And we hope we'll meet again. Thanks a lot.